So here, so uh, you guys were talking. I got I got a whole bunch of uh, of talks here, right? Um, I could do, but I thought I'd do the uh, here's the FRS one. I'll save that for for another time. But uh, um, since you guys are talking about FL Digi and Pi, maybe I'll do my uh, ICOM interface project. Oh, very good. Okay, so so what this is? It's uh, I had a um, so I had an ICOM uh, IC seven hundred seven. That's uh, that's a picture of it here in the background. It's an old ICOM I got in a state sale. Got it for several hundred dollars and best investment I ever made. I tell you, um, Ken, you're looking at getting an an older ICOM. Go for it, man. So um, uh, I had a long history of inter interfacing my PC to my ICOM. I tried doing all kinds of stuff and I was too cheap to go buy an interface. And I kept trying to build stuff with transistors and I was just plagued with RFI and ground loops. Just, I fried so many transistors and there'll be times where I'd key up the radio and all of a sudden my PC would start doing weird things and vice versa, my radio would start flipping channels and it, it just all of a sudden it would just, go nuts. Things would just be weird. And it was just RFI and ground, ground loop. So I needed a better solution. So I, I said, okay, I'm going to do this right. So what I did was I, I completely isolated the PC section from the radio section. Two completely different grounds. They never touch. I used opto isolators and transformers to cross over between the two. So there was never a direct connection. And I used a whole bunch of these uh, chokes. So there's a choke coming in on the uh, USB power supply. And I, I bought these chokes off of, um, I went, I did, did some research and I found um, DigiKey had these chokes, which were perfect. Just absolutely, you look at the curves, it was perfect because anything, you know, from about uh, a meg up, it it just knocked it right down. So I had one in every power supply line. Um, the uh, on the radio, the radio supplied power to the radio portion of it, and so I had a couple of chokes there as well, um, and uh, transformers. This was all driven by a pick, of course. It has to be a microcontroller, right? That has to. Uh, do it, and I also put a USB chip. So I just plugged the USB in, and I didn't have to play around with uh, loading drivers. This was a, what's that uh, chip, the FTDI chip? So, you know, almost every computer had the driver. I didn't have to worry about loading drivers. It was plug and play. So here's the PCB board, and you could see right here, you could see the split between the grounds. You can see the ground pour. So this side's the radio and this side's the PC, right? So here's the USB coming in. And I had switches, various switches, and I had all kinds of LEDs. Uh, I had to use an ISCP chip because it was a PIC microcontroller. And so I had to use a ISCP interface to program the chip. I even had put a, an interface here for future if I wanted to uh, connect this to something else. Uh, I had a sound card interface for the, it had pots to control the, um, uh, the audio levels. And uh, I, I've been using this now for years and years and years. All my RFI problems went away, no more problems. It works flawlessly. As a matter of fact, when I contacted uh, you guys at Carex that time, few months ago, this, I was using that, uh, that uh, interface. So from a software perspective, it's dirt simple, Ex dirt simple to run, to run this. Uh, now in the pick, you define, you're, you're talking to the hardware. So I had defines. So this RXD underscore USB is just a define pointing to a pin. So if that pin was high, basically something's coming back from the USB. You know, I dropped the pin or I, I pulled the pin up on the radio, the 
the pin going to the radio and vice versa. If something was coming back from the radio, I did the same thing. And basically that, that was it. I was just, just looking at bits going up and bits coming down. I wasn't storing anything. I was just passing it through, basically passing it through. Very, very simple. And uh, so there's the interface there. And I had various LEDs which would flash. You know, you'd see in my code, I had uh, LEDs going on and off, various uh, LEDs indicating, you know, I think DTR, I use that to key the um, the rig yep. for doing push, push to talk, right? So that was my push to talk there. And the rest of this was just um, stuff going to and from the uh, radio. So you did not use a 4N25 or some other opto isolator? A which? You used what what opt, what opto isolator did you use? Oh, it was I don't know if it's labeled on here. Can we zoom in? It would be something like a 4N25 or a 4N Yeah, yeah, it's it's something like like that. No, you can't see it here. See, I look at my my interface. I took mine off of um Oh, it was a website that used to be very good for packet and digital back in the back in the days. And they had a four and twenty-five interface, but it's ridiculously simple. Yeah, I got the uh, actually I got the chips here. I got I got a whole big reel of them. I don't know where I put them. I had like I went to um, Dayton, and yeah. I got you know uh, like like a four foot reel, a four foot. Um, Strip of them. Them. Yep. And I got them like dirt cheap. So, uh, you know, that was perfect. So I used a bunch of them for, for uh, this project. And this was, you know, the hardest part was just figuring out the hardware. Really, the hardest part was really getting this chip, getting the footprint of that chip and, and getting that, that etched because this was all etched using toner transfer, right? Right. So that's it. And there's my uh, two knobs I used to uh, control levels. And that's it. And uh, this thing works flawlessly.